how to prevent your interactions from fizzling out. In this video, I wanna go over four techniques that you need to be doing in your interactions with women. That way, you never run out of things to say, you never get into that awkward silence, and more importantly, you're not stuck halfway in the conversation where it just kinda starts to fizzle out, and the girl walks away, and you're left with nothing more than a, it was nice to meet you. So, with that being said, let's get into point number one, which is understanding that it is on you to carry the beginning of the conversation. I don't know how many times I've been coaching a client and we're breaking down his interaction and I hear the very beginning of when he goes up and approaches or opens or says that one thing to the person and it's literally just like three, four or five words. It's something like, hey, nice jacket or hey, how's your day going? Or, oh, hey, I like that thing. Or, hey, what kind of drink is that? Right? Or, nice dance move. Whatever the thing is that you opened with, understand that when you're talking to a stranger, especially an attractive girl, it's very, very unlikely that you say that one little thing and the person's going to give a massive response. And this is where I think most dudes just have the wrong mindset when it comes to interacting with strangers or approaching women. You need to understand that whatever you start the conversation with in terms of like words and vibe and delivery and enthusiasm, almost every single time, the person is going to give you back a portion of what you gave out. Now, it doesn't stay like this the entire interaction, but when we're getting into the conversation, before we've actually hit a hook point, and this is where most dudes' conversations die, by the way. They go up and approach a girl, or they say something to that one girl during their night out, or they're talking to a stranger in passing or whatever it is, and it dies out in the first one, two, three sentences. And it's because you're going in with the wrong mindset and the wrong philosophy of what it actually takes to get an interaction off the ground. You need to understand that whoever you're going up and talking to, they don't know who the fuck you are. They had no intention of talking to you and they are not out trying to practice their social skills, all right? They're out in their own day to day with their own fucking agenda, with their own people if they're out at night trying to do their own thing. That doesn't mean that they're not potentially open to having a conversation if they feel comfortable and good energy, but they're not waiting for someone to open them so they can just dump their fucking day onto them and just start talking like crazy. Occasionally, you know, very small percentage of the time it may happen if the girl is just extremely attracted to you but you need to understand like 95 plus percent of the time whatever you put out there you're gonna get a fraction of a response back from them so when you go up and you say hey I like that thing or nice dance move or what drink is that or sick jacket or how's your day going you're gonna get good thank you a smile or a wave or say okay like I would assume that I'm gonna get one two three words of a response actually maybe zero to three words of a response somewhere in that range so when you can change your mindset when it comes to starting an interaction and understand I'm gonna say this thing and I'm gonna get somewhere between zero to four words of a response and it is instantaneously back on me to provide the next couple of sentences for the conversation if you just do that one thing a lot of shit is gonna change if you go into the elevator right now and you say hey how's your day going understand the person can say oh it's good Thanks for asking. Or if you say, hey, I like your jacket, they're gonna say, thanks. Maybe she's gonna say, thanks, I just got it. Right, if you say, oh, what kind of drink is that? They're gonna say, oh, it's a, it's a IPA, it's a Red Bull vodka, it's a, it's a ginger ale. Okay, you're not gonna get much. So with this in mind, now that you understand this and you have this epiphany right now, you need to go in prepared that I'm gonna say this thing, I'm gonna then get a zero to four word response, and now I need to go in and provide the same amount as what I initially said, if not even more, with very minimal downtime in between her response. Because that's another place that dudes go wrong. They say the first thing, they get that one word, they're kind of thrown off because they had the wrong mindset about the whole thing. Now they're sitting there and one, two, three seconds goes by, and then he says something, and it's already fucking weird, dude. It's already weird, it's already uncomfortable, and when you're a stranger to this girl, and it already feels uncomfortable, she's going to start to pivot away from an uncomfortable feeling from a stranger. If you're walking down the street, and some fucking dude comes up to you that you don't know, and he's creepy, and he says something, and it's uncomfortable, you're not gonna stay there and continue to try to over-invest in the conversation. And I think that that's what your perspective is when it comes to interacting with strangers. You say the thing, small response, ah, she doesn't like me. I gotta go work on my looks. I'm just fat, or I'm just a loser. I'm just not this, or Coach Kyle's so much better looking than me. That's the only why it works for him. It's like, no, dumbass, you're doing it wrong. 
You're doing it wrong. I don't go into an interaction and the thing just fucking flies open. The girl's like, thank you so much for talking to me. Oh my God, you're gorgeous. Finally, an attractive dude came up to me. Yes, my jacket's actually from Zara. My mom bought it for me the other day. I, she, she gave me this wrapping and I opened it up and I was like, oh my God, mom, but enough about my jacket. What's up with you? Wow, thanks you so much for talking. It doesn't work that way. You go up, you say the thing, you get a thank you. And that's expected and that is okay. So don't freak the fuck out when that happens. That's what's going to happen. That's what happens to me too, dude. The only difference is I go in, I say that with an expectation of I'm getting this response and very quickly without panicking while staying calm because I already know what's going to happen because I practice this. I have a smile on my face and with a calm, relaxed demeanor and vocal tonality and rhythm, I then respond with an even more lengthy next sentence. Okay, so I go in with the thing, I get zero to four words, and then it's on me to talk slow, confident, relaxed, and have something to say in that next follow-up sentence. It's not how you open, although there's technicalities behind that, but what's more important is how you follow up. The girl doesn't even fucking remember how you opened her. All she knows is the feelings that she's experiencing in the first five minutes. Like it takes fucking five minutes for the girl to fully calm down and for us to even really be in a conversation. Before that, everybody's just panicking. There's like these nervous fucking mannerisms sparking off. We're evaluating if we should eject. It's not a, a consistent thing that happens where people talk to strangers and it's like this amazing experience. So flip your fucking mindset around this whole thing, guys, because that's gonna make all the difference. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Okay, well, if I say that thing and I get the small response, well, what do I say after that, Kyle? Don't worry, that's why there's point number two in this video, which is having something to say to carry the conversation. And I, I've said this in multiple videos, but it's really the idea of just having personal input about whatever we're already talking about. So if you commented on a jacket, if you commented on her drink, on her dance moves, on how nice of a day it is, if you're asking the person how their day's going, whatever the topic is, you just wanna be able to nice and confidently, with a little bit of a smile on, with good enthusiasm, have something to say about that topic. So if it's a jacket, it could be what that jacket reminds you of. It could be what element of the jacket do you really like? Was there something about it that caught your eye that provoked you to give the compliment? Is it a similar piece that you were looking to purchase for your friend or your sister has that piece? Or the material of it reminds you of a new piece of clothing that you recently bought. If it was a dance move, it could be the fact that you can't dance for shit. Honestly, I, I do that, I say that a lot. Like I come on the dance moves and then I make a joke out of it, but see, no, like, I can't do that. I'm a, I'm a white boy, no, no, no puedo bailar. <laughs> but it's good, it's good. You know what it reminds me of? That's how you get into a conversation. Now the person is starting to see I'm confident, I'm cool, there's no awkward, nervous mannerisms, and I'm carrying the conversation. I'm providing the next little beef of the conversation for them to then latch onto. All right, dudes go up and they say the thing expecting the girl to like steal the show. Thank God you opened me here. Let me take it from here, I got you. It doesn't work that way. It's gonna be, you get the tiniest bit of acknowledgement and now it's on you. Now is like the real open. The real open is like after the initial fucking, I got your attention. Cause half the time when you open, she doesn't even fucking see you yet. She's kind of like there. She doesn't even know if it's nighttime. She doesn't even know if you're talking to her. Honestly, half of you dudes get rejected. The girl didn't even know you were talking to her. <laughs> Straight up. So having something to say about whatever the thing that we initially started the interaction with. If it was, how's your day going? And they just say, good, comment about how your day's going. Or comment about what it looks like they're experiencing their day. Sometimes I'll ask people in the elevator, I'm on the 45th floor, so like, my elevator stops like fucking 10 times on the way down. There's a lot of people I interact with on the way up and on the way down in my elevator multiple times a day. And so what I've noticed is if I'm commenting on how they're doing, they either sound like they've had a long day or they haven't had their coffee yet, or they've been stressed out in meetings all day, or they're finally relieved that work's over, or they're excited that it's the weekend and they finally get to sleep in, or they're going to the gym, or they just crushed a workout, or they just got home from a lunch, or they had this healthy smoothie drink, they're bringing home their food. Like, There's a lot of things that you can just take a mental note of if you just look at the person. And this isn't just elevator game. I'm talking about in your day to day, 
day, if you're talking to somebody at the gym, if you're talking to somebody at the nightclub, if you stop a girl on the street, once you can get comfortable stopping them and carrying that first couple senses, you'll be able to slow down the interaction and just be able to look at them and evaluate how their day's going. And oftentimes you can make assumptions and that turns into questions and personal input about the things you can notice about them. And that's not even including their clothing, their tattoos, their hairstyle, their fashion, their, their demeanor, the way they talk, their accent, whatever. I'm talking about just like the tonality and the facial expressions and the, the energy that they have. It says a lot. You can make assumptions about that and carry a conversation. I could go more in depth on that in, in, in a different video because I don't want to turn this whole thing into assumptions and cold reads. But on a more simplistic level, guys, just have something to say about whatever you notice or whatever you started the interaction with. And if you go in and start it a little bit more direct, you can elaborate on that thing too. You say, excuse me, I was just walking by. I, I thought you looked really cute. I wanted to come over and say what's up. She's gonna give you a quick, quick response. You need to be able to stay calm and carry the conversation from there. Yeah, honestly, what I noticed really was blank, blank. Or you know what's interesting actually, when I saw you walking, I really liked how you had blank, blank. Or I was thinking, this girl must be blank or blank. Now, how's your day going by the way? You look like you just finished up blank. You look like you're on your way to blank. Okay, you can start talking about those things and then you could go into personal input about how your day is going too. Or if you're a little bit later on in the interaction beyond just that initial open and you still feel like the, the thread is dying or fizzling out, what I recommend doing is just talking about your day. Like my default always goes back to personal input, even if it's not relevant to their topic, because sometimes you'll be on a topic of conversation and like you just don't have too much to say about it and it fizzles out and then it gets silent just for like a second. You can always revert back to, you know what's funny is I had the most blank day today. I had the most blank day yesterday. And that could be a variety of different things, but you're just gonna insert some kind of emotion. I had the most frustrating, exciting, annoying, happy, relaxing, draining, whatever the emotion is like, literally just talk about what happened today, what happened yesterday or over the weekend. It doesn't need to make perfect sense linearly in the transition of the conversation. And that's another reason you guys fuck up is you think that it needs to transition from this to perfect transition to here, to perfect transition to here. And so when the thread dies, you're like, where do I take this? It's like, dude, chill out. Just start talking about your day, if nothing else. Conversation dies, we're talking about water. Yeah, she was so, she was super dehydrated. Oh, you drank the water, that's awesome. You know what's funny is I had the most draining day yesterday, honestly. I, I was like slammed with work. Okay, that doesn't make perfect sense. And again, this is further into the interaction, but if you've already been talking to somebody for a little bit, they don't give a fuck. They're not gonna think, oh, that was random because they also realize that the conversation was kind of dying down too. Honestly, they're kind of thinking about what would be the next thing for me to say. Is there anything coming to my mind? And when you just kind of provide something, they just go into that attention. They're not linearly graphing out the conversation threads and like, Kyle, that was a weird jump of topic. Like, girls don't think that way uh, at all, okay? Girls don't think that way. And even just strangers in general, if you're already a couple minutes into the conversation, as long as there hasn't been a massive 15 seconds of silence and you just let one, two seconds go by and you just say that thing, like, it's not a big deal. So point number two is having something to say to carry the conversation. And I just showed you guys how you could do this towards the beginning of the interaction, as well as like slightly further on in the conversation. And as I'm saying this guys, if you feel like you're somebody who really struggles with conversation skills, your vibe, flirting, and like creating attraction in those interactions with women, and you really want to get better with those things, click the link in the description, fill out an application for an opportunity to work with me personally. I can break down your conversations. I can help you with your vibe, increase your social confidence, get more women, more dates. Click that link. More details on that at the end of the video. Let's get into point number three about how to prevent your interactions from getting awkward and fizzling out, which is number three, get comfortable with silence. And this is a little contradictory to the other points in this video. I'm aware of that, or it may at least appear that way, but it's really not. The, the thing is that most of the time when it becomes awkward in an interaction or it fizzles out in the interaction, it's because you get really in your head and you get nervous and you start panicking around where you're gonna take the conversation. It's almost like as the vibe's dying down, you, you start getting fucking nervous and start like thinking about what you're gonna say. That nervous energy, that like fidgety energy, it bleeds out. People can feel 
that energy. Like even when I'm talking to a dude, I can tell when he's awkward. I can tell when he's nervous. Like literally last night, I was out with two guys. My boy and he brought his friend who's a, this 6'4 jack dude. He's 6'4", like 230 lean. He's on, he's like literally on testosterone. Really good looking dude, full head of hair. He was the most awkward out of the three of us last night when we went out. Like literally it was me, him, and my other boy who's 6'2", and he's like right in between us. He's got a good vibe. I was the short dude. I'm 5'8", and I'm rolling out with two fucking twin towers. And the tallest, best looking dude out of the group was the most socially awkward and got the least amount of interaction in with women last night. Actually, what happened was we were leaving the venue uh, and there was girls in the elevator with us that we were talking to earlier in the night. And then literally as we're leaving, they were like, he doesn't talk much, does he? <laughs> and he actually was, he looked away and was like, no, I do. And we, we even joked because like he turned away as he was saying that. So despite him being really good looking, he just didn't have the social confidence being comfortable in those interactions when there's like a little bit of pressure. And so what I'm telling you guys is you need to slow down and chill the fuck out when you're in the interaction. It's okay for there to be a little bit of silence in a conversation, but what you don't want is to act nervous in those moments. When you're fucking weird and awkward in those moments, understand that a little bit of silence is okay. Not in the very beginning, because remember the previous points about carrying the conversation and it's on you to get it going. But if you're on a date or if you're like further along in the interaction, at least like 10 minutes in, it's totally okay for you to chill the fuck out and have some silence. And what I would recommend doing is understand even if you're nervous in those moments you're like fuck it's it's getting awkward breathe all right breathe chill out and don't look directly at her especially if you're on the nervous side because if you are nervous and you're like looking at her it creates this weird thing i would actually recommend that the interaction dies out you take a deep breath you chill and you just kind of look around for a second don't do this like being tense or looking at her like that's weird, okay? Those are weird fucking energies and vibes and, and body language. So the interaction dies, I recommend like if you have a drink or if you have your cell phone, whatever you do, you just fall back on those things, but move super slow with it. So the, the conversation dies, I'm like, yeah, it's fucking crazy, right? And give her a moment to fill in the next silence. Give her a moment to say the next thing. It's okay to chill. Now, I'm not gonna get into some silence battle where I'm holding the silence indefinitely until she breaks the silence. That's not what I'm saying. But I do wanna act chill and give her three to five, maybe seven seconds. If we're actually like on a date and it's been a while of talking, it's okay to give longer periods, but you can chill the fuck out as long as you act normal, okay? Don't be like this or this, but chill the fuck out. Chill the fuck out, take a deep breath and actually focus on displaying that you're relaxed. And then part of the time, the girl actually will fill in the silence if you give her a, enough time. But the other thing is that it does is by you just chilling out and staying calm, even if she doesn't, well, I just gave myself like at least five seconds to think about the next thing to say. So now you actually have time, you're relaxed, you're slowing down your breath so you actually can think of some shit. And if nothing else, you fall back on point number two about what I was saying. You could then even go into, uh, I had the most blank day today or yesterday or over the weekend. Okay, that's always an easy fallback line if nothing else. We're on the date or I'm further along in the interaction and at some point the thread kind of dies out, I'm gonna chill, give her five seconds. If she still doesn't chime in or look like she's going to chime in, then I could go back in with, you know, point number two. So I said, yeah, that was, no, that, that's hilarious. Drink my water. Okay, she's not talking, it's all good, I'm, I'm calm. You know what's funny is I had the most annoying day yesterday, honestly. And then she's gonna say, what happened? Or she's gonna say, oh, really? Or me too, or my day was blank, okay? And then you talk about the thing. Even if you had a boring day, you could just say, honestly, I had such a slow, almost like relaxing day yesterday. It was kind of boring, honestly, but like, I don't know. It was just nice to fucking chill out. And then talk about what you did, like if nothing else. Dudes are under the impression that you need to have like world-class conversation skills and be like remarkably witty. You don't, dude. A lot of game and conversation is just being able to be chill, non-reactive, slow the fuck down, and be able to talk with enthusiasm. 
and have good nonverbals. Like those are really critical and that carries the majority of it. Everything else is like the fucking icing on the cake that could take you to like higher and higher levels. But dudes are over focusing on the, the tiny little icings on the cake when they don't have a solid foundation, which is everything I'm talking about in this video, okay? So that's number three is learning over time with practice to be really comfortable and relaxed in those silences. And that brings me into the final point, number four, about how to prevent the interaction from fizzling out, which is have canned lines and canned stories that you could always fall back on. A lot of the times, guys, the conversation threads are extremely repetitive in interactions. If you've ever been on a date with a girl or you go up and approach a girl in the nighttime or the daytime or in the elevator or in the gym, the conversations are the same fucking topics all the time. People ask me the same fucking topics. I go out every day and go up to girls. They're always asking me, how old are you? What do you do for work? Where are you from? Oh, you moved here recently? Where did you move from? How was your day going? How was your weekend? Like these are obvious fucking questions and they're so predictable. I can guarantee they're gonna happen. I'm gonna go out again today in about an hour and go out and do some interaction. And I promise you, the girl's gonna ask me, oh, you moved here not too long ago? What do you think of Miami? Or where did you move from? If I just say, yeah, Miami's good so far. That's fucking boring, dude. If I say, yeah, I moved from New Jersey. That's fucking boring. It's boring and that's why you suck at conversation because you haven't just taken a little bit of time to sit there and realize, okay, I'm gonna be asked these questions. This is the test. Just study for the fucking test one time. Instead of having a lifetime of boring fucking shit conversation, put in 30 minutes one day and just write out some decent answers for this shit. Cause I can predict it. I can guarantee you that it's gonna come up. And another time when you're in the gym and someone asks you, how's your day going? Or someone asks you, what do you do for work? Or someone asks you, how old are you? Or where do you live? Or what do you do for work? Or what is your sign? What's your zodiac sign? Or what ethnicity are you? Pay attention to the questions you ask the people because they're just gonna ask you the same questions back. And the key really is to just have something to say about these. And ideally, you could even go one step further with it, which is a little bit more advanced, but you could actually structure out your answers to really d demonstrate high status or high value in the, in the same answer without it coming off bragging. So if, if I told somebody, yeah, I'm actually new to Miami, I already know they're gonna say, where did you move from? Or I say, yeah, I actually live in Brickell. I just moved here. So if, instead of me just saying, I live in Brickell, I could say, yeah, I actually live in Brickell. I just moved here like six weeks ago. And then they're gonna say, where'd you move from? Now, the boring answer is New Jersey. A little bit better of an answer is, I actually moved out here from New Jersey because honestly, the fucking winters are so shit out there. Like, had I not have moved out here, I'd literally be standing in a fucking foot of snow right now, freezing my ass off while I'm trying to bring the dog to the park. <laughs> and I was just, after spending 34 years in Jersey, I, I was I was born and raised out there. So I, like, after a certain point, I was like, you know what, I just wanna like move out. I, and I always wanted to go somewhere warm, but I'm not really like a West Coast guy. Miami's always been more my speed. So that's why I made the decision to come out here. And that wasn't even my canned answer. That was me improv an answer right now. The canned answer, which is a, a completely different direction, which by the way, it doesn't need to be relevant as to why you even moved out here. Cause guys, you know that they're gonna ask you certain questions. So just take some time to make some flavorful fucking conversation. So another answer I could say, oh, so where'd you move from? Yeah, I actually just moved out here not too long ago from New Jersey for like a couple different reasons, honestly. And a lot of people talk shit on Jersey, but like, I don't know, I was like born and raised out there. So it's like, Jersey will always be my first love personally. Two, it's just like cold as fuck in the winter time. And like, especially during like February, March, I'd literally be outside in the fucking dog park right now, standing in a foot of snow, freezing my ass off, thinking about when am I gonna move to Miami? I mean, the third thing was like, my business actually just recently took off over the last couple of years. So I don't know, once I decided to go more remote with it and expanded the team, I, I was just fortunate enough that I have the financial freedom now to like work wherever I want in the world. So I was like, okay, I have the money, I have the freedom. Like, why am I still in the fucking dog park in a foot of snow? It's like, it's not making sense to me. So I don't know, I just made the decision finally. This year I was like, you know what, fuck it. That's like one of my New Year's resolutions was to get, get the fuck out of Jersey. So I made it. How long have you been here? Look, those are different answers, okay? And one of them is very long. The other one isn't as long. And I can do a very short one too. Okay, so those are three different answers you could do. The very short one is like, yeah, actually I just moved out here from New Jersey, which is crazy because I spent my whole life there. It was kind of like a big jump, but I just need to get out of the cold. 
right? That's like a short one. Then there's a medium one where I elaborate on what's going on in Jersey. A little funny story about me freezing my ass off at the dog park. They could ask me what kind of dog I have. They could transition a bunch of different ways there. And then there's a longer answer. So which one do we use, Kyle? Well, depends on where we're at in the interaction. If it's the first sentence of the conversation, I'm not going off on a fucking one minute tangent. I'm probably gonna keep on the shorter end, all right? But if I'm on a date, if I'm 10 to 15 minutes into the interaction, I'll probably go with the longer one because we've already been talking for a long time. So at the bare minimum, at the beginning of a conversation, you wanna have something to say. Extend it at least one to two sentences using personal input on whatever we're talking about. If we're a little bit further into the interaction, that's where we start to get into more interview mode type questions. What do you do for work? What do you do for fun? Where do you live? How old are you? What's your fucking zodiac sign? Whatever the fuck the question is. That's more for like that mid leading to end game of, of an interaction. So the further in I am, the more I could stretch it out. And also the more enthusiastically they're responding, the further I could go with the story. So it's not uncommon. If I do that long story, I won't even get through the whole story. I'll probably get through about half of it. And then the other person will comment on something in there. They'll talk about, have they ever been to Jersey? Oh my God, it's snowing over there still in March. Like they might say something around that. I didn't even get into my business talk yet about how I grew my business or what I even do for work or what was I doing previously or, or the fact that I'm 34 years old. Like there's so many different details that this, this conversation thread could go into a bunch of different directions. And I don't need to finish the whole story. I get quarter of the way through and the girl says, oh my God, it's still snowing right now in March, uh, I'll say, yeah, honestly, like I was just talking to my mom. You know what it is? It's like the, the weather fluctuates out there. So like one week it's fucking 65 and sunny. Next week you're back in a fucking blizzard. And that's why March kind of sucks. It was always like that too, because my birthday is in April. And like sometimes for my birthday, it's fucking beautiful out. There was even once on my birthday, we were at the, the, the Jersey Shore which is a whole nother story. Don't even get me started with the Jersey Shore. But, and then there's other times where it's like still fucking damn near winter. And that could lead into a whole different direction. And that's how the conversation never really fizzles out because with my answers, oftentimes I don't even get through the thing. It's like I go a quarter of the way through my answer and we go into a new topic. And that leads to me asking her about her experience on that. And then I go personal input off of that. And if that ever dies, I go back to the main plot line of the initial story and I go a little bit further with this. So we talk about the snow. That whole thread could go on. She, she's never experienced snow. That could go into travel and other warm places she likes to go to where I've traveled, keep going. Eventually it dies and I said, well, yeah, I mean, anyway, but, and that's crazy that you were at Tulum too. I was, I was there once too, but yeah, it's just like, I don't know, Jersey's just not as hot right now. And so that was like one of the main reasons I moved here initially. And I, the third thing is really just cause my business. And now I'm right back onto the initial thread. And this whole talk, even though it seems like we're talking about one topic, there's like a hundred fucking topics in there. And the girl's really getting to know me and my story and what I do. And I'm getting to know her at the same time, which is really, really powerful. That's how you actually master flavorful small talk. It's like, I'm really just giving canned answers, but I have so many different directions I could take it down. And I already know all the shit I need to say, which allows me the mental bandwidth to focus more on in the moment things. You guys have nothing to say. You haven't prepared any fucking material, as mystery would call it. You haven't prepared any material for the interaction. And so when you're in there, you're trying to improv. You barely talk to anybody throughout your day to day. So you're panicking, vibe dies down, and then it gets fucking weird. You're uncomfortable in the silences because you haven't provided anything and you don't stay calm. And then it's over. Versus you have something to say. It's memorized due to you rehearsing it, due to you taking 30 minutes to write out some good fucking uh, answers practicing it, and then going out into the field, into real life and implementing it with people. When you have the story memorized, guys, I don't need to think about what I'm gonna say anymore. Now look, I don't have the whole interaction fucking canned and rehearsed. I'm just showing you, I have this answer, then I can predict that someone's gonna ask me that in my day to day. So when I have that answer, I could say a little bit of it without even having to think about that. And I'm focused more on how are they responding? Do they make a facial reaction when I say this one part to it? Does she get excited when I say this one thing? Cause I'll say the story, I say, wait, why'd you make that face? You don't like snow, do you? Because I don't need to think about where I'm taking the topic. I can do this also so fucking present on her reactions that I can like improv more skillfully simultaneously, okay? So that's more 
advanced level. You don't need to be all the way there, but if nothing else, guys, have some decent, flavorful answers. Take 10 minutes after this video and just think about it. What, what would you say if someone asked you, what do you do for fun? What do you do for work? Where do you live? Are you, how old are you? Like, think about these. Because most of you dudes, you just say the fucking boring answer and then it goes right back to silence. You get weird and the conversation dies. So if you can practice these four points, that's going to transform your conversation skills. So if you're a dude who really struggles with like running out of things to say or it's, it's fizzling out, you're not creating attraction, you're, you're nervous, you, you lack that social confidence in the interaction, you're really just not getting the, the kind of women or the caliber of women that you really want, I can help you with that shit, guys. You probably found value in this video, but I can actually work with you directly and give you the structure, the accountability, the guidance, the community that you need to actually fast track your journey to really level up, become that guy socially, get more women, more dates. If you're interested in that, click the link in the description, book out a free consultation call, dude. You've watched enough videos, my man. You've watched enough videos, okay? You need guidance from somebody who's been through this. I've spent 12 years going through this. I'm out there every fucking day doing this, coaching this. 436, I'm actually six minutes late for my live coaching call. I'm about to run a three hour live coaching call with some of my clients right now. So if you wanna work with me, click the link in the description, book out a day and a time to sit down with me personally so we can discuss more about your situation and how I can help you, all right? That's all for this video. Peace out.